Hey, welcome back to Learn SDR. Now we're going to build our first real application with the ability to transmit and receive. And since uh, since we have a Pluto that can transmit, uh, we're going to use that. And the application is going to be Doppler radar. So on our Pluto, we have a transmit antenna that's really close to our receive antenna. And you might think that that's not particularly useful. But one of the simple things it does is if we transmit a single tone, like we did last time, and receive that single tone, we can see that as we move around the room or as I move my hand closer or farther away from the Pluto device, the, dev the wave that's reflected off my hand arrives at the receive antenna with a slightly different frequency. Now, of course, most of the wave goes directly from the transmit antenna to the receive antenna. So we'll, we're going to be looking for a small additional component that, that's gotten reflected. And let me just draw what's happening here. So when the Pluto transmits a, out of the transmit antenna, a wave comes out. And this wave is at quite a high frequency. We'll use a frequency that's pretty close to the maximum of the Pluto, 3.5 gigahertz. And if I have a, a barrier here, like my hand, it will reflect off of this. Well, let, me, let me draw these as, as circles because some are going to directly go into the receive antenna and some are going to bounce off my hand and come back and add to the signal from that receive antenna. And if I move my hand back and forth, that actually changes the frequency of the received signal. And how can I think about that? Well, the I'd say the easiest way to think about that is to trace two adjacent peaks of, of the wave. And as if two adjacent peaks are moving at the speed of light, they're separated by whatever the period of 3.5 gigahertz is. And if I hit a static barrier, they reflect and they're still separated by that same period. Now, if the barrier is moving, say the barrier is moving away, my hand is moving away, it'll reflect from this barrier and the time between peaks will be slightly longer. So the first, the first peak is gonna reflect and then I move my hand away a little bit. And the second peak is gonna reflect. And uh, when, when this reflection reaches the receiver, the frequency will be a little bit lower. And if you work out what that frequency is, it turns out to be the change in frequency is the frequency that we're transmitting at times the fraction of the speed of light, so the velocity of this thing over speed of light, times two. And the times two is there because we're not transmitting from this moving object, we're, we're reflecting. So you sort of, uh, that ends up counting twice if you actually uh, trace out what happens from peak to peak. And let's, let's plug in some numbers here just, just to get an order of magnitude estimate of what this delta F should be. If we're transmitting at 3.5 gigahertz, that's three, not 6.5, 3.5 gigahertz, 3.5 times 10 to the nine. And the velocity of my hand, let's just round that to be about three meters per second. So that's kind of a fast jog. If you were to jog across the room, a three meter room might, you might be able to jog out in about a, a second. Uh, and the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And this factor of two here. So the threes are gonna cancel. This eight is gonna cancel one of those nines. I'm gonna get 35 times two uh, Hertz. So this is 70 Hertz. And that's certainly enough to hear. You can hear a difference of 70 Hertz. And that's, that's the goal of this, of this exercise is to build a flow graph that allows us to hear that slight difference. And we'll learn a little bit about the RF environment and a little bit about how sensitive it is to things like reflections off of people and off of walls and off of anything that's moving. So, so let's, let's begin. Let me erase the board for a second. All right, so let's, let's begin to build a flow graph. 
I can pretty much pick up where I left off. Let me just change the name of this to Pluto Radar. Radar, Pluto Radar. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to change my sample rate. So let me actually change my sample rate to something that I can control. And I'm going to make that 2.4 megahertz, which was a sample rate that we've used several times on the RTL SDR, especially when we did FM radio. It's nice because it's 50, 50 times the audio rate. So eventually we'll downsample by a factor of 50. And let me, uh, let me set the, the tone not to be 50 kilohertz, but let me make it 500 hertz. So that's sort of right in the middle of the audio range. And let me, I'll, I'll be able to change this a little bit. Let's go down to two, two kilohertz and up to two kilohertz. So I'm just gonna narrow the range of my, my tone. Um, I'll still be transmitting that tone at a sample rate of 2.4 megahertz, frequency of 500 hertz into my, my sync. Here I actually have to change my sample rate. And if I just type sample rate and hit okay, I actually get an error because it's a little, this is a little annoying. It's a little bit tricky, but everything that's in green here has to be an integer. So I, I could have typed an integer into sample rate. That might be the easiest thing to do. But if you already have something and you just want to use it as an integer in Python, you could just type int and put it in, in an int, and then it will turn that into an integer and then the Pluto won't complain. But the other thing we want to change is this LO frequency. So instead of 2.4 gigahertz, I'll go to 3.5 gigahertz. That's pretty much on the high end of what the Pluto can do without uh, a hack. The hack is very simple. That gets you up to six gigahertz, but this is pretty good. And it's, it's in the middle of a, an amateur radio band that I have access to. Uh, and everything else is probably fine. So we'll just leave it, leave it at that. I will, uh, oh, let me change one thing. So in addition to the receiver gain, we also have a transmitter attenuation. So the default is 10. So if you turn this up, it'll attenuate the transmitter more. I wanna put that on a slider so I can not overload my receiver attenuation. So let me add another range here where I call it TX attenuation or attenuator, what did I call it? I'll figure that out in a second. So my default, I'll leave it at 10. And I think I can, I think I can attenuate all the way from zero up to 100 decibels. Let's see if I called it the right thing. Okay, yes, that looks good. So that's, that's the transmitter. I'm just transmitting a tone. I can change the tone a little bit. I can change the strength of the transmitter, transmitter a little bit. Uh, on my receiver, let me just move this over because I'm gonna need a little bit more room here. I have my receiver gain which I can also control. And let me change the sample rate from this default to int samp rate. And I think everything else is fine with my manual gain. I'll continue to look at what's coming in and maybe I will start giving these names. So let me call this um, transmit real part, transmit uh, imaginary part, this will be receive real part, receive imaginary part, and my frequency spectrum, I'll just call this receive. That way when I add more and more plots, uh, we'll, uh, we won't have a problem here. So the first thing I wanna change is I actually want to look at more points. So right now I'm looking at 1024 points. Let me multiply that by eight, it's still a power of two. And same thing with the frequency sync. This will give me a more accurate frequency spectra. Remember the, the span of the frequency spectrum is always set by the sample rate. The maximum frequency that it will show is always half the sample rate. But the resolution is set by how many points you, you transform into a frequency spectrum. And I think, I think that's good for now. Let me actually just play this as it is. So it's a very slight modification of our previous one. Ah, you know what I think is wrong. I know. 
I didn't change this receive frequency. So I'm not even receiving what I'm transmitting. Okay, that is embarrassing. Should have made that a variable. All right, ah, here we go. Whoa, okay. So now I'm really blowing out the receiver. So let me, let me turn this way down. Let me turn my transmitter attenuation way up so that I'm getting a reasonable level here. I can okay, leave my okay, receiver so what, gain. What was the problem there? What did you just change? Oh, uh, my local oscillator frequency was still set to the default 2.4 gigahertz for Wi-Fi. I changed the transmitter to be 3.5 gigahertz, but I failed to change the receiver to be 3.5 gigahertz. So I was transmitting on one frequency and receiving on an unrelated frequency, which is why I wasn't seeing anything interesting. Got it, thanks. Okay, so now I'm seeing a big spike and a very clean signal. And let me zoom in on this spike. And it's really close to zero because it should be, should be about five, 500 Hertz. But if I wave my hand in front of it, you can actually see that there's a little bit of, a little bit of change that's going on as I wave my hand in and out in front of the antenna. And that's what we're gonna focus in on. And we can't really see it as well in this, in this raw picture, but we'll see it next. But what you do notice if I zoom out, all the action is gonna happen really close to zero Hertz. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pretty aggressively low pass filter this signal. So let me look at a low pass filter. Low pass filter. Um, the sample rate for my low pass filter is samp rate, that's good. Uh, I will set my cutoff frequency to be one kilohertz. So remember we're transmitting a, a tone around 500 Hertz. Here, let, me, let me just change that to two, two times tone frequency. Tone frequency times two. So we'll let through the tone and we'll let through a little bit more and we'll cut out everything else. And the transition width, I'll make it 250 Hertz. That's, that's pretty narrow. And I'm, this low pass filter takes a lot of computation, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compute only every 50th point. And so after I low pass filter, I'm gonna keep only every, only every 50th point. So I'm gonna decimate the signal by 50. So what we have to remember from here on out is the sample rate after this block is no longer a sample rate. It's now sample rate over 50. Uh, but I think everything else is fine. Let's actually look at that signal. So I'll pull up another QT GUI time sync. Time sync and frequency sync. About almost every stage, we want to look at what we've done. And I'll call this uh, in the config, I'll call it low pass, low pass filtered real part, low pass filtered imaginary part. And I have to change the sample rate. It's not sample rate anymore, it's sample rate over 50. And the sample rate over 50 happens to be 48 kilohertz, which is exactly what the audio card eventually expects. So that's, that's good, we're on the right track there. Uh, the other, the frequency plot again, this is sample rate over 50. I'll change this to say uh, low pass filtered so we know which one we're looking at. And now let me play that again. Uh, and let me make the resolution of this much higher. So again, I'll multiply this by eight to get a high, High resolution power of two. Okay, so let's let's see what we've got so far. Oh, I should really uh, turn the transmitter attenuation up by default. Let's let's set it to be somewhere and make this forty. So this might be different for everyone, which is why I put on a slider. But forty looks about right. So I'll set it, set the default to be about forty. All right. So this is our our uh, received signal, low pass filtered. Uh, Signal looks pretty good. Down here, we have the low pass filtered and down sampled frequency plot. Let me actually zoom in on the interesting part here. And here we actually see a, a spike that's pretty narrow and it is now in kilohertz. So this is a half a kilohertz, so that's 500 Hertz. And we can track this spike and see how it changes as I move my hand in and out. So let me do that in front of the antenna. And I don't know if the Zoom video 
is capturing this, but you can see there are some some sort of side side oozing that happens on either side as I move my hand towards and away from the, the pair of antennas. Uh, so that's, that's what we want to listen to. So the next step is to filter out this really loud signal, most of which is coming directly from the transmitter to the receiver. But we want to keep just that, that sort of slide sloshing and send that to the speaker. So to do that, we need another filter, let me move this up. We need another filter and that is a band reject filter. Band, there's a band pass filter, which would pass that. That's not what we want. We want a band reject filter to get rid of it. Oops, let me give myself some more room here. Uh, okay, so what are the parameters of this? Well, sample rate, remember we have to remember, new radio doesn't keep track of this or you have to keep track. The information that flows through the streams is just one complex number after another. It has no metadata about where it came from or sample rate or anything else. So you have to keep track of that yourself. So sample rate is the original sample rate over 50. And I'm going to enter some parameters here. The low cutoff frequency where it starts to cut, I'm going to say that this is 495. And the high cutoff is 505. So I'll I'll leave five megahertz below 500 and five, or sorry, five hertz below 500, five hertz above 500. And the transition width, I'll make five. So it's a, it's a pretty narrow filter. And, and now, now I need to do something with this. Let me, let me set, uh, let me multiply this by a constant. So eventually we want to send this to the speakers, but it might be quite, quiet. So let me multiply this by a constant. And the constant, I will call it audio gain. And of course, I'll put it on a slider and give myself a range, range object, range block, and audio gain, audio gain. Uh, the default is one, that's fine. We'll probably have to raise it. Uh, we can go from Zero to 100, that's, that's probably fine. Um, let's look at what we have. So again, I'll put down a time sync and frequency sync as we often do. Um, again, we have to be careful here. The sample rate is now samp rate over 50. I'm gonna call this maybe uh, band reject real part and band reject imaginary part. And here I will increase the number of samples in my frequency spectrum, make sure the sample rate is sample rate over 50. And I will call it band reject for the frequency spectrum. Okay, so let's play that and look at what that looks like. Make sure everything looks fine before we start to send it to the audio card. Oh, I forgot to change my default transmitter attenuation to 50 for what I decide 40. Okay, so the received signal is well within uh, between negative one and one. Low pass filter, it stays there. Oh, ignore all these little little markers here. That just says when the when the memory buffer starts. I don't know how to turn those off. The Pluto receiver object inserts these little tags that kind of follow the stream around and occasionally show up on these plots. I think there's a way to turn them off on the plots, but it's, it's probably not worth it if you can learn to ignore. Um, let me look at my signals here. So this is the raw receiver coming in. It's mostly the single tone. And the resolution of this plot is not very good because I'm still at the very fast sample rate. This is my low pass filtered and down sampled spectrum. So my resolution is much better. I can zoom in here and I see my big tone. And after I pass through the band reject filter, there's not much left of that tone. There's still a little bit, not too much, but let me swipe my hands back and forth. And you can see now as I go forward or away, so backward, forward, backward, 
forward. I start to see little, little um, blobs on the side come, come up or down. So that, uh, that is what we want to eventually pass to the audio card. So let's, let's do that. To pass it to the audio card, we need a real signal. So right now we have a complex exponential that's zipping around in a circle at around 500 hertz. But we need to turn that into real. So real, there's a block called complex to real. This just takes the real part. That's fine. That's the, the cosine at a frequency that's around 500 hertz, a little lower or a little higher, depending on whether I'm moving my hand toward or away. And an audio sync. Audio sync. Go to the sound card. And let's make sure that the sample rate of the audio sync is 48 kilohertz so that we're sending data at roughly the right rate. I remember the clocks are never perfectly synchronized, so we might get underruns or overruns occasionally. But this will this will do pretty well, uh, pretty well for now. All right, so if I play this. Now, what you'll notice is that there's a slight delay between when you move your hand and when the sound shows up. And that delay has to do with buffering all of the radio frequency signals, sending them over the USB port, doing all these filters, which it's not that they necessarily take a, long, uh, a lot of computing power, but they need a lot of, uh, a lot of data to, to form some weighted average on before they spit out the sample. So uh, th there is a kind of a noticeable delay. If you move your hand back and forth really fast, you'll be a little bit out of phase with, uh, with what you receive. All right, I'll let you play with that for a while. And notice that you are in fact infect, uh, affecting the radio frequency environment around you. So if you do radio frequency tests, you have to be pretty careful and it's not always obvious what, what is going to affect what, but certainly big conductive things that are moving in the vicinity are gonna cause not just static reflections, but these Doppler shifted reflections, which at these gigahertz frequencies are, are actually quite noticeable. Uh, this will also come in to play later when we start to talk about how do we compensate for the carrier. So if I have a transmitter and a receiver, if they're moving even a little bit with respect to each other, there'll be some Doppler shifts that, that we're going to have to track and compensate for. And that'll be a topic of a later, a later class. All right. Uh, Enjoy playing with your, uh, your Doppler radar. 